could uh, do time. Well, first of all, thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to present this work. Uh, in the next few minutes, we will explore black strings, which are another type of solution to the Einstein equations admitting um, horizon-like structures in the context of the most general four-dimensional action that covers the interaction between gravity and a scalar field, keeping second-order dynamics, the so-called Hordensky model. In particular, we are going to discuss about uh, the translation invariants uh, Hortensky theories, and we will unveil some of the strings that we find in this sector. Uh, so here's the outline of the of the talk. In the first minutes, I will try to motivate the subject, then go straightforwardly to the main result, which is that any chip symmetric model admits a black string uh, under some a little uh, constraint, but basically everyone is invited in here. And just to finish with a little bit of the thermodynamic analysis for the string or the thermodynamic density for the strings and finishing with some final comments and open directions that arise for our findings. Okay, so uh, let's start motivating. Uh, the recent results of the Event Horizon Telescope attempts to confirm one of the the existence of black holes, one of the most remarkable predictions of, of general relativity. <coughs> um, black holes are uniquely characterized by some degrees of freedom, um, which is uh, something like um, uh, an endpoint, an endpoint of the the black hole thermodynamics. <laughs> And black holes are protected by some uniqueness theorems stating that basically any asymptotically flat and with other certain conditions, uh, all four dimensional black holes belongs to their care or the care of one family in the case of the electric charge. So to, to motivate gravity in higher dimensions, one can set a, a, a very list of of motivations, for example, advocating historical reasons, the fifth dimension was theoretically conceived by the calusa klein model in the attempt to unify gravity with electromagnetism. Or on the other hand, the string theory requires higher dimensional higher dimensions for mathematical consistency. Even from an astrophysical point of view, there are some, some authors that successfully constrained uh, higher dimensional black holes with the event horizon telescope data, slipping the idea that one cannot rule out higher dimensions for the observable physics. However, maybe the most simple approach, maybe the most pragmatic approach is the fact that higher dimensions offer new physics, new subjects to study and new objects also to study, for example, black strings, black rings, black brains, or even a black Saturn that enlarge the phenomenology reached by year. <coughs> I'm sorry. So just maybe the most two, the best iconic examples of the new physics in high dimensions is the fact that the uniqueness theorems are no longer valid the examples or counter examples are the Myers-Perry black hole together with the Empire and Real black ring. On the other hand, um, this is a result from the 90s that black strings suffer from linear instability. So to set some definitions for a string setup throughout this talk, we will consider a direct product between a d-dimensional pseudo-Riemannian manifold, which we call here the background, uh, with a one-dimensional space. So at the end of the day, we are splitting the manifold so that the set, the extended coordinate does not belong to the X in here. <clears throat> um, and this is, we take advantage of these answers for the rest of the talk. So um, let's start warming up the discussion with a very simple example. We want to solve the Einstein Please? equations for Dime. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. for, for instance, G tilde 
that's that's the doesn't depend on set, right? This no, 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 no. We are we have a, a block a block shape in here, so okay. GPU okay. depends only on X and set is flying around. Okay, so so it's to totally disconnected. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so let's try to solve the vacuum Einstein equations for the string setup, assuming staticity and spherical symmetry. So everyone here knows uh, which the background is, but for the discussion and pedagogical reasons, uh, the point is, as I just stated, that we take advantage of the direct product manu uh, answer, sorry. So we can split the equations for the background on the one hand and for the extended coordinate on the other hand. Maybe this example is uh, really simple because on the background, you will get that g mu equal to zero imposes the Ricci flat constraint and the extended coordinate is just a free pass because it is the same constraint. So at the end of the day, assuming staticity, spherical symmetry and so on, we get that the following metric is a five-dimensional solution for the Einstein equations. Here, the background is just the Schwarzschild black hole with an extended coordinate. The, this solution presents an extended notion, if you want, for event horizons, because the hypersurface are equal to 2m. Uh, it's geometry, it's a sphere, times a circle if we properly identify the limits for the new coordinate. I'm sorry. So uh, as I stated before, the, these strings are unstable and the endpoint of the Gregory Laflamme instability was performed by Lenner and Predatorius a decade ago and recently and independently reproduced by Figueras, Franz, Agu, and Andrade a few months ago. So let me see. Okay, so I hope you all see the video. Sorry, Luis, which is the, the, the range of the coordinate set? Is that is an identified coordinate? Is random? Yes, the extended, yes, the extended coordinate is identified. Ah, okay, okay. okay. So it's, it's a circle. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. So I hope everything is seeing the video right now. No, we no can't I cannot see the, see video, the animation. Luis. Oh, so bad. let me see. What about now? Yeah. Yes. Is you, is you... Okay. Play. Okay. So this, yes, this is a... Um, a video from the GR Chombo YouTube channel from a software, numerical software for this analysis. I take the video from the channel and the credits go for the... So just to heat up the, the, the idea is this is the evolution of the strings. The string evolves in, into a sequence of a thinner string connecting black holes, which leads, eventually leads to the pinch off of the horizon. And therefore, this is a violation of the weak cosmic censorship uh, conjecture. Okay, so it's a really nice uh, footage of the idea. So let me go back to the, the presentation. Oh, what are you? What are you guys? Nice. Okay, so solving the problem for the Schwarzschild solution was, was easy enough to try to mimic the process for the Schwarzschild ideas. So let's include a cosmological constant and see what happens. Again, we split the equations, the same answer for the string, of course. So we split the equations and in the background, we obtain that the Ricci scalar has to be equal to four lambda, but on the string coordinate, oops, I see. It has to be equal to two lambda. So as you can see, the cosmological constant spoils any chance to match these equations. And this inconsistency was observed uh, or was solved by Cisterna and Oliva a few years ago. 
who introduced a scalar field minimally coupled to gravity to solve the incompatibility. They proposed that the minimal uh, scalar field is depending only on the string coordinate. They found exact solutions for arbitrary dimensions in which you can also include additional extended coordinates. The price to pay is that for any additional coordinate, you have to include an additional scalar field to match everything. But here, the, the more important thing to, to the talk is the fact that the minimally coupled scalar field implies the claim gordon massless equation, the, the massless claim gordon equation, which at the end of the day, since the scalar field depends only on the string coordinate, will induce a linear profile for the scalar field. Here, there is a second uh, integration constant, but you can get rid of it by the feomorphisms. The, sorry, the, the point is that this omega here, which in principle was an integration constant, get fixed in terms of the cosmological constant. So here is the uh, here is the reproduction of the b equal four and p equal one case for the cisternal Liga solution. Capital X is the kinetic term, which is just minus one half omega squared for the string cord the, for the string linear profile of the string. And so, as you can see, the introduction of the scalar field provides the matchup of the equations. It must be noted, expressed, that since the left-hand side of this equality is negative because it's minus one half of omega squared, the right-hand side has to be negative. So only negative values of the cosmological constant are allowed in the cisternal Liga model. Okay, um, notwithstanding black strings were introduced as higher dimensional objects, part of the community got interested in the analysis of four dimensional strings. For example, uh, these two groups studied uh, four dimensional strings in Chern Simons modified gravities, in which the scalar field gets non minimally coupled to the Pontryagin density. <clears throat> So for the ansatz, the proposed ansatz, you can get that the Pontryagin density vanishes. Um, and moreover, the dynamics of the non-minimal coupling term all, also vanishes, ensuring compatibility between the background and the extended coordinate. However, uh, since the Pontryagin density vanishes on the ansatz, you are recovering the massless plane Gordon equation again, so you are recovering the linear profile again. You can get rid of the affine parameter again by the feomorphisms and the scalar chart, the omega in here, again gets fixed in terms of the cosmological constant. Um, just as a curiosity. What, what is fixing omega in terms of lambda? The, uh, uh, the, the the requirement that the string and the base manifold has to be compatible with each other. Ah, okay, because you obtain two values for R, for, for this color. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, I see, thank you. So uh, just as a curious curiosity, we can swap, just hand waving, we can swap the Pontryagin density for the gauss bonnet density in the previous model and we will generate equivalent results. Maybe the gauss bonnet density is even more clear because the Riemann tensor or the Christoffel symbols, if you want, do not receive any extra contribution for, for the a string coordinate because of this direct product. So at the end of the day, the gauss bonnet density for the four-dimensional space-time is just equivalent to the gauss bonnet density in three dimensions. And in that scenario, we are protected by Lovelock theorem and the gauss bonnet density trivially vanished. <clears throat> okay, at this point, um, as Oscar uh, asked, the scalar charge gets fixed in terms of the cosmological constant. And if you are following what I'm trying to say, it is because of the compatibility issue between the background and the 
and the string coordinate. But you can ask the, if this fixing is always true for other kind of space times, and the answer is not at all. Definitely no. Indeed, one of the most interesting things about the scalar, uh, scalar field is that they induced a new degree of freedom in the system. And just for strings, we are, get, we are getting this restriction. And so is there a general framework in which we can study this fixing issue? And the answer is affirmative in this case. We have, at least in four dimensions, the most general scalar tensor theory keeping second order dynamics, the Hordensky theory. Um, just a reminder, chern simons modified gravities are not part of the Hordensky sector. So hereafter, we are extending uh, sister Noliva mode. Okay, so in particular for this talk, we restrict to the shift symmetry sector. So the model, under a scope possess translation invariance. And this is the most general Lagrangian with second order dynamics gets, uh, it has four independent functions labeled G2, G3, G4, and G5. Again, the notation X is the kinetic term. So, uh, why do we cover the shift symmetric sector? It is mainly because of the ANSAT, because Hordensky models with chief symmetry for the ANSAT ensures that the massless plane Gordon equation is always a solution for the full scalar equation for any functions G2, E3, E45. So it's, uh, you, can, you can actually prove this using these properties that arise for, from the ANSATs. For example, the double derivative of phi, it, it's a uh, box phi times the deltas, but that's because of the answer. Again, using these properties, so I'm using the linear profile as a solution or box phi equals zero as a solution for your scalar equation. You can also get that parity invariance in this model is recovered at least on shell. So at the end of the day, and let me go back to the previous slide. At the end of the day, you can get rid of the full L5 and L3 because of parity issues. So you can start with models with L3 and L5 and you will get for the linear profile that it will by vanish. So all these arguments uh, invite, it, invite us to study the most general model in this sense which is just L2 and L4, well, parity issues are also covered. So for this model, we obtain for generic functions, G24, we Please, obtain sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I think Marcelo has a question. Sorry. Um, okay. uh, no, 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 all of this discussion is in, in the direct product answer. Or... Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we are taking advantage of the direct product answers. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Luis, mm -hmm. do we have to restrict the functions in such a way that you don't have ghosts or because the ki kinetic terms that I'm worried about that. In the in the the general model? Exactly, because you have some functions of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the. But you will, but Hordensky model ensures second order equation. So I did not see ghosts. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you have solutions with a positive energy. I, I, I don't know. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. you, you will show the, the, the charges, I think. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so the general model admits rotating black string solutions. Uh, there is the compatibility issue Oscar asked is encoded by this equation in here. Again, recall X is the kinetic term. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, 
if I gave you two functions, G2 and G4, and they satisfy this constraint equation, you can obtain um, the following solution for, for a rotating uh, string. But as you can see, the three-dimensional background just resembles the BTZ black hole and all the information for the G2 and G4 functions goes just to the cosmological constant or an effective cosmological constant, if you want. <coughs> okay, so. Um, since we are working with generic functions G2 and G4. Okay. Mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the action, do you have a, a, a cosmological constant term or? Yes, it is included in the G2 function. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Okay, so um, given that we are working with generic functions G2 and G4, one can observe that asymptotically flat and even asymptotically the Cedar string are, are or even a Every strings are technically possible. I mean technically because we have mathematical consistency, if you want. Uh, however, I did not find any plausible model with, with flatness or the Cedar strings. Uh, however, uh, if the theory under a scope admits an Einstein limit, define it in such a way that when you kill the kinetic term, you just recover the Einstein-Hilbert action, then the scalar charge is necessarily fixed in the parameter space. Um, the proof of this statement is, is a straightforward uh, using the constraint equation, because if you think for a moment that this equation is for arbitrary values of x, which means that x is Free, so it's a, a new charge over here, if you want, then the functions are going to fix in such a way that G2 is G4 cube over X. So if you demand that your, your, that your model returns to the Einstein model in the vanishing limit, then you are screwed with the cosmological term, if you want. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, like any other generalization problem, it is always customary to return to the previous examples. So the system Nolia string just follows from fixing G4 equal to one and G2, here's the cosmological term, plus the kinetic term. And the gauss bonnet non-minimal coupling follows for our, uh, a specific choice of G5. However, as we stated before, when you, when you impose the, the linear profile for the scalar field, the function G5, it's uh, something like a, a, a zero, if you want. It's not included in, general, in the general model because of parity symmetry. Please, you have five minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I'm just finishing. <clears throat> okay, so let me finish with uh, a little bit of thermodynamics. The conserved charges can be carried out in the Euclidean approach or in the mini superspace approach or in the Netherworld approach also as the, the group for the Chern-Simons springs did. Um, however, the Euclidean approach of the mini superspace approach will work in here because all these models uh, or the, the, the effect of the scalar field is just included in, in terms of their derivatives. And since it's a linear profile, then it, it is just a, a constant. So we have to assume a finite length for the string Otherwise, the action will be divergent. So, in the uh, in the Euclidean action, or the Euclidean action is properly identified with the Gibbs energy in in a very specific limit. 
<clears throat> and then you obtain a reduced Hamiltonian form in which assuming that the action has an extreme around the solution. So if the variation of the action is zero, then you can obtain the variation of the boundary term just performing the variation of your reduced form, reduced Hamiltonian form. However, as you can see, if I demand that the Euclidean action has an extreme around the solution, I'm also imposing in that sense that a fulfillment of the first law of thermodynamics in the grand canonical ensemble, fixing the temperature and the velocity. This is just passing the mass to the other side of the equation. And you can perform this argument uh, or any other argument for the conserved charges. And at the end of the day, the mass, the entropy, and the angular momentum all depends on the function G4. Well, or the densities, if you want, because of the length of the string. <clears throat> so I think I'm pretty much done showing the charges. Um, just a, a little, uh, a brief comment about the stability. The strings, you can obtain that the, the strings satisfy thermodynamic global and local thermodynamic stabilities. So the question about the Gregory Laflamme instability popped up at least for five dimensional model. So let me finish with some comments. In this work, we have obtained four dimensional rotating black strings in the full spectrum of Kordensky models with translation invariance. If our limit goes back to the Einstein-Hilbert action in the vanishing limit, then our scalar charge is always going to get fixed in terms of the parameter space. However, um, if you if you consider, for example, this choice, at least I say technically possible that hairy strings can be recovered. Um, the model containing the Lagrangians L2 and L4 can be straightforwardly uplifted to any dimensions. However, in five dimensions, the gauss bonnet density is no longer a topological invariant. So this kind of couplings lose translation invariance. And these theories can unveil, I hope so, can unveil new results using or not using the, the linear profile for the scalar. So what's next? Uh, obviously try to go beyond shift symmetry and try to go beyond the linear profile. It simplifies a little bit the model. Obviously, as I just say, said, sorry, the higher dimensional setups for some other couplings. And finally, try to reproduce the instability or, or not of these strings because uh, the cisterna Liva model was proven to be stable under the same perturbations that trigger the Gregory Laflamme instability. Okay, I think I just in time. So thank you very much.